This chapter includes nudity, heavy alcohol use, and themes of vulgarity and sophomoric behavior. It is not suitable for children. Summer evening, frantic young lovers slipped away for one last night of passion and lovemaking. It was the dark times. Chaldea was at war. The call of duty summoned all young males, humans and elves alike. However, the harsh realities of war meant that many of these brave souls would never return home never to see their family and friends, nor feel the embrace of that special someone. No, it wouldn't be right. Your father. You let me worry about my father. Tired of him controlling my life. Tomorrow I go to war, and I will most certainly not return. Then let's forget tomorrow, for tonight belongs to lovers. Cut, cut, cut! Fortunately, it was not the dark times, but rather a theatrical reenactment of a chillingly dire chapter in Chaldea history. Combo, the writer and director, thumbed quickly through the script, searching. Curious. I can't find that last line in the script. It's called improvising. Improv. Thank you. Next. Actors. I said next. He heaved a frustrated sigh at Desiree Magmedden, the assistant director and assiduously adept production designer. Speaking of actors, the lead star, Zayn Adrelastos, set his sights on a gaggle of aspiring starlets waiting in the wings for their turn to audition. Ugh, is he actually drooling? Leggy brunettes make him... Thirsty. Thirsty? Dehydration's more like it. I swear, no trough is big enough for that elf. Touché, my darling Ginge. Touché. Name? Hi, I'm Terracella. Remember, no improv. Just follow the script as I wrote it. That applies to you too, Mr. Adrelastos. Now, from the top. That afternoon, with auditions complete, the three friends, Zane, Combo, and Desiree, exited the theater that, in fact, bore the Adrelostos family name. They were students attending the prestigious University of Dorsang. Nestled amongst hills and lakes, this sprawling campus offered a picturesque bird's eye view of the free city of Esh on the island of Dorsang. <sighs> It is days like these that the theater can be just so exhausting. Juliet was strong, cried on demand. No. No? But Juliet has astounding access and range. Why the disdain? Harry n Zane! Desiree slugged Zane in the arm. What? I'm serious with her. One is faced with the age-old question, suckle or floss. She slugged him again. Ow! Kindly cease from the love tap, Des. This is a professional production, not your personal dating service. Ugh, the D word. Dating leads to marriage, and that is a big steaming pile of never gonna happen. Focus, people. Zane, who's your top lady? Tabitha. Serenity. Hard to decide. Honestly, I could see either one in the role. Role? <laughs> I thought you meant who I'd like on top. You know, riding the Destrier. Would they be most excellent in the play, too? Unbelievable! 
A few days later, Zane sat in his bed quietly writing in a journal as Tabitha and Serenity slept soundly. He momentarily stopped scribbling when the page came alive with words, like a supernatural conversation written by invisible hand and quill. Zane heaved a heavy sigh of resignation and wrote... Without warning, the bedroom door swung wide, interrupting the enchanted correspondence. Christine, Zane's personal valet, a whirlwind of efficient, constant tidying, dashed into the room, cleaning as he went. Christine, what brings you here at this ungodly hour of 11.19 in the morning? They need to go. But Tabitha and Serenity aren't done with me, and me with them. <laughs> Ladies, time to greet what's left of the day. If you would kindly gather your things and scamper to class, post haste. That means now. Zane circled Juliet's name and wrote, then slammed the journal shut. Zane followed his valet to the great room. I know what you're going to say. Master Zane, you've been wallowing in Dorsang for 24 years, four years in drama, three in philosophy, two in history and music. Your father fears it's all for naught. Me, believe it or not, I've learned things. You, like your five-year sabbatical at Elf Camp? And what in Yadisil's name is Elf Camp? Me, it is a bohemian paradise. You, more like a hallucinogenic sexcapade. Are you quite finished with your histrionics, Master Thespian? From your parents. Christing handed Zane an ornate box, and in it, a magnificent jeweled necklace. Impressive rock. A starfall jewel is not a rock. It's a remnant of an Anumian constellation. Once in a great while, they fall from the sky and make for a wonderful jewel. They are rare, and when enchanted... Are you even listening to me? Huh? Uh, yeah, uh, Starfall, Anumian, rare, enchanted, got it. Elvin Smiths shaped this jewel into the most cherished of Adrelastus family heirlooms. Here's to the world's greatest parents. There's a small catch. I knew it, damn them. Despite promises to the contrary, you've failed to change your undisciplined, libertine ways. Therefore, your mother and father want to motivate you. Motivate me? <laughs> With this rock? Yes, please, motivate away. With an arranged marriage. Marriage? No f***ing way. The deal's done. You will marry Ariadne's daughter, Crystal, in three months' time. Three? Bullshit! I'm not marrying into that chaotic bunch. At your wedding, you'll present the Starfall Jewel to your bride, thus sealing your eternal bond to her and between the two families. Take this loaded albatross back to my parents. Post haste! That means now. Eyes watering, Zane struggled mightily to remove the Starfall gem. What the? I wouldn't. <laughs> It's a promise chain. Binds the Starfall to you. Ariadne is rider to the contract. She has, well, trust issues. My father would never arrange a marriage without first asking me. This must be a message. A message? What kind of message? Did my father mention anything else? Other than sending a priceless Anumian gem. Zane, you there? Zane followed Combo's frantic voice to his private balcony. Combo? You hate exercise. The Emperor! He... he's dead! The Emperor is dead. 
It's gotta be a hoax. No lie! He expired! Kick the bucket! 100% ex emperor! I'll be down in a sec. Holy shit. You hear that, Christine? I heard, Master Zane. And we must leave at once. What? If that is some sort of message your parents knew something they couldn't openly say, you should return home at once. If Cortava is truly dead, a power vacuum of chaos and war will ensue. Evil, darkness, and much pain will fall upon Chaldea. Wow, who's histrionic now? Christing had an annoying flair for the melodramatic. We live in the free city of Ash, Christing. Free from political fallout. Free from religious persecution. Free from everything. It'll be fine. Master Zane, nothing will be fine for a very, very long time. How's this? I'll take a short holiday, go see the parents. That make you happy? Oh, very good, sir. But why the change of heart? If this is a message, I'll see what they want. If not, I'll convince them to cancel this idiotic engagement. And should that not work, I'll find a loophole. A loophole to remove yourself of responsibility. Loopholes are like silver linings. Always be on the lookout for both. An hour later, Zane and Combo gathered with hundreds of fellow students, all huddled anxiously around a bulletin board, next craning to read the official notice of Emperor Cordava's death. Wow, wow, and wow. Who killed him? Desiree brushed by Zane to see the news for herself. You look lovely, thank you. Someone just died, Zane. My charms. Bullshit. Charms will win you over yet. <laughs> Desiree was smitten with Zane. She knew it and he knew it. And worse yet, she knew that he knew it. She'd escalated the hard to get flirting game to Mount Olympus Heights. Kordav is a god, right? Doesn't that make him Immortal? No idea. I didn't take Rules of Godship 101. At least I don't think I did. Found dead in the throne room. Better that than the toilet room. But who cares? He's dead. The Emperor is dead. Let's paint the town red. But... I... But what? Afraid to let loose? This is serious. Cordava forced the religion of Set down everyone's throats. The celebrations will offend Setites. Cordava said goons have no jurisdiction here. Hello, freedom of religion? I just don't want any trouble. Don't worry, I'll protect you. You protect me, gods. My pledge is true. So, my good friend, Combo, the emperor is... Dead. Class, this is your turn, Des. Cancel. Bars open. The universe is obviously telling us one thing. Pub crawl! Drinks are on me! Later, Zane and his friends, as well as a rambunctious horde of University of Dorsang undergrads, hit the streets of Esh, eager to celebrate. The tyrant demigod of Set ruled the world no more. Normally, Desiree preferred studying in the solitude of libraries over participating in the frivolity of campus life. But tonight, a chance to experience history rather than merely read about history stood before her. Why not take it? I've never done a pub crawl. The first drinking hall of the day, a Dorian public house. Bent? Dick? What? Once inside, Zane eagerly slammed Elven Platinum on the bar. I'm buying for everyone. Empty that keg, good sir. Zane's enthusiasm and flamboyant display of wealth energized the crowd. To the Emperor's death, may he rot. Drink, 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 drink. drink, drink. <laughs> Zane locked eyes momentarily with a Muromaki man whose samurai armor indicated that he was obviously not local. Before he could notch a conclusion, Combo dragged his friends out the door. What's next, bitter bitch? Oversexed elf? No, bitter bitch. Huh? The pub crawl was officially afoot. 
The next stop on the drinking tour. Oh, bitter bitch. <laughs> okay. The bitter bitch. Combo quickly delivered a round of whiskey shots and a bit of news. Word is demons killed the emperor, sacked the capital to boot, at least according to some dwarf taking a piss out back. Never trust a dwarf with his hand on his And how did you arrive at that old chestnut? Uh, my father told me. And how did your dad... Oh, <laughs> shut up. What about elves? Trustworthy? Let me rephrase. Never trust a dwarf or Zen. Oh, shot down by days again. The trio knocked back their shots in unison just as the Muromaki man entered. Were they being followed? A disconcerting wave of paranoia swept over Zane before Combo pulled him into the street once more. Post bent dicks and bitter bitches, ale and whiskey warmed their bellies and lifted their spirits, driving the trio merrily past celebratory crowds. A squad of Settite soldiers marched solemnly, somehow maintaining an even strain while observing the revelry. You know what they say, the bigger the hat, the smaller the prick. You Settites. <laughs> you tell him, boys. I don't get it. What? Dropping the drawers? Seems undignified. If it's not sexually arousing, what's the point of it? One moon's when you really want to rub it in, be it in jest or a serious burn. Bottom line, it shows you got the better of them. Get me? See, like this. I got the better of you, Zane. <laughs> Zane pondered the sophomoric gesture and marked it up to humans. As afternoon shifted into evening, alcohol continued to flow fast and wild, like a river of wine at a Dionysian mysteries party. The convivial trio partook in the unique characteristics and libations of each and every pub in Esh. Our merrymakers tossed coins at the Tittywumpus dancers, danced and sang rounds at the understudy, pounded vodka at the rebellion, played zombies' demise at ye old fable, emptied a keg of dwarven rock ale at dwarves' folly, and faced the devil amongst the tailors in the salty dive. Zane observed that for someone who supposedly had never participated in a pub crawl before, Desiree showed a remarkable aptitude. But not everyone was in a playful mood for drinking. For every pub the triumvirate entered, the stern, armor-clad Muromaki man followed. Always in shadow, and just out of sight. Outside the salty dive, the cumulative effects of the pub crawl were starting to take a toll on Desiree. Whoa! Gotcha! <laughs> we're so wasted. Yeah, speak for yourself, lightweight. At this late hour, the harbor buzzed with the unusual activity of arriving vessels, most of which were ships of war. Less drunk, the trio might have noticed and pondered the surging naval buildup. Combo was equally distracted, but decidedly for a different reason. A veteran of many a pub crawl, he knew, as all previous students before him did, that drunk, the Anumian spirit of liquor and celebration, haunted the skies above. The final stop. Guys, it's the remedial scholar. 378 ales on tap. We're gonna shut this place down. The happy-go-drunk staggered before the Remedial Scholar, the most renowned public house in all of Esh. Last one in is the Fat Tort's Camiglione. Oh, you guys go on. <laughs> well, I'm fine, really. The old scholar buzzed with heightened kinetic rhapsody as swift-footed servers struggled to keep up. Water and bread. Please. Oh, excellent. Have a seat. Or lie. Perfectly fine. The religious factions are out tonight. 
On an ordinary night, any number of religions could walk the streets of Esh. Yet on this particular evening, so soon after Cordova's death, tensions filled the air, imparting an edge to the presence of the various Ma'at factions. Soon, the server returned. It's water. You're dehydrated. <laughs> What's so funny? At the audition, <laughs> I diagnosed you with dehydration, drooling over all those actresses. No trough is too big for that elf, I said. <laughs> but look at me now. Irony be a fickle friend. I'm not always such a shallow hound. I have deep moments too, you know. My rackish behavior could be an act of rebellion against my parents. I learned that one in psychology. Parents, always questioning your choices, deciding your future. Who needs that? <laughs> Poor you. Having parents who actually care. Count your blessing, do you have them both? I'm an insensitive ass. I'm sorry. Just don't take your parents for granted. No one should. Well, Miss Lovetap, I also learned that when a girl hits a boy, it means she likes him. What? I hit you because you're annoying. If I'm so annoying, as you say, why do you put up with me? I'll be the first to admit it. I'm an enigma. Wrapped in a conundrum tied to a question mark. A beautiful ginger-topped enigma wrapped in a conundrum tied to a question mark. Zane leaned close, lured by true love's first kiss, and she eagerly accepted, longing to know the soft texture of his lips, the sweet smell of his breath. The necklace lit up like an agitated chaperone extinguishing the lover's blossoming passion. <coughs> it's like something up and died in my mouth. Ow! <coughs> oh, ugh. it's hot, hot, hot! Now it burns! <sighs> is this a sick joke, you son of oh, a bitch? No! This promise chain is to blame. Harry Adney's <coughs> promise chain! Is that, is that a Starfall gem? Wait, are you engaged? How do you know about that? We took ancient history and astrology together, remember? Desiree examined the Adrelastos family heirloom, quietly crestfallen for what it signified. Okay, so exactly how do I get this cursed thing off? She lifted, <coughs> yanked, <coughs> pulled from behind. Good! Stop! <laughs> You're God's damn hurting me! And not the good kind of God's damn hurting me either! The chain, magically enchanted. Strongly magically enchanted. Obviously, Ariadne's got you on a very short leash. Well, congratulations. You'll be pure and chaste for Crystal. Good luck. Hold on. Does that mean I can't f f Actually, it's no f Again, irony. The remedial scholar seemed to enforce but a single rule. There is always room for one more. A hulking, thick-chested brute of a man witnessed the small-statured elf and Dorian gal struggling against the current. So, he parted the sea and hoisted her up. Give the elf and little red some breathing room, will ya? The barbarian's looming presence and otherworldly arsenal of artifacts and weapons marked him as a graver, someone not to mess with. The revelers were drunk but not stupid, so they immediately gave him some space. Thanks. Two Kurganales for my friends here. No, that'll be water for me. F.D. noticed Zane admiring the decor, especially an ostentatious blue sapphire rapier. I donated it to this historical establishment of Wisbeck. Entitles me to drinking privileges. You gave that away? Keen. I, Master Elf. You appreciate its true beauty. Methinks you and I be fast friends. I feel I've seen you before, somewhere. Curse you have. I defend the tongued fortress. Name's Fortress Defender. But call me FD. I'm Zane. Zane Adrielastos. I'm Desiree. Mind if I call you red? Desiree is my favorite color. Sure. Who's gonna stop you? <laughs> the world can use more humor, eh? 
Funny girl? Oh, that's me. Funny girl. What brings you here? Same as everyone. Celebrating the Emperor's demise. Figured it was a party to savage, not to miss. So, if you're here, who's left to defend the Tongued Fortress? Listen, Little Red. Don't you think for a moment. I don't keep the fortress. Defend it at all times. FD let slip a snarky wink and a nod. Oh, right, right. Cheers. Combo, over here. Combo approached, with Tabitha and Serenity in tow. Oh, great. Meanwhile, at Zane's bachelor home, Christine received a carrier gecon with frightful news. I must find Master Zane. Back at the remedial scholar, the bartender doled out more drinks. Rounds on me. Free drinking privileges applies just to you, FD. Tis the rules. I mm. says who gets drinks. And I say my friends drink. All right. All right. No rules says I can't bend the rules. Trouble was brewing. Zane sensed the mood in the room turning sour as he once again caught a glimpse of the armored Muromaki loitering nearby. See that fellow, the samurai? I think he's stalking us. Why would a samurai be? A diminutive priest of Set, Nimlot, and his counterpart, a much taller captain of the troop, Mentu, pushed roughshod through the merrymaking. Hey! Watch out, midget. You're one to talk. Jans, no disagreement a free drink can't settle, yes? F you elf. Got a problem? Zealot ice holes. Move along. Now. Nimlot and Mentu backed off, wanting no part of this fortress defender, or the other one coming around the corner. A second imposing barbarian waded close, a menage a trois of friendly swingers hanging on his arms. What's going on, brother? This new arrival was identical in every respect to FD. From the boyish sparkle in his eye to the Cthulian blade on his back. Religious pricks. Acting like they have the biggest peckers is all. That shit. All of us knows my c**t's the biggest. Hold on, brother. You mean our c**t's? The barbarian twins erupted in bombastic chortles. As if there was more to the joke that only they understood. Excuse me. Got a day in the sea, dragon. And just like that, F.D. was gone. To the consternation of Desiree, Tabitha and Serenity took the opportunity to sidle up next to Zane. Maybe it's time we leave. Hi, Zane. Uh, hello, ladies. What's wrong with Zane? Oh, you'll see. First Serenity, then Tabitha locked lips with Zane. Ugh! Oh, nasty! Don't do that. To think I let you s in my hair while swinging me on that trapeze last night. Nice aim, arsehole. And what is it with you and those mimes, freak? They didn't even do anything but watch. <laughs> oh, God! You had to bring up the mimes? It's supposed to be a secret. And I swear, my aim is true. Could really use a charm to unhear all of that right about now. Beyond the remedial scholar and Zane's current woes, in the streets of Esh, civil unrest reared its ugly fangs. Angry Isis worshippers faced off against parishioners of Set. Tempers soon flared, which began punches, weaponry, bloodshed, and ultraviolence. Dear me. Desperate to avoid the fray, Christine sidestepped down a back alley and into more trouble. Oh no. A column of Setite foot soldiers hid in the darkness, led by a daughter of Set, a priestess touched by the hand of God. She flipped an asp. Its venomous fangs sank deep into Christine, paralyzing his very heart. He dropped like a stone. Ah! Zane! <clears throat> Take the city! A servitor of Set, a creation divine soldier of the god himself pushed forward, stepping over Christine's lifeless corpse and into the mayhem beyond. 
Unaware of the mayhem brewing in the streets, Zane and Combo pondered the Starfall necklace. So, does this taste like a heap of burning shit fresh from the ass of a troll? All to keep him honest for the wedding. Hells, bells, marriage. Wait, you two? No! no. Crystal's the fiance. Oh, shit. A crazy god's daughter. Yes. Fortunately, I'm going home to stop this madness. Orin's but what about the play? The play? That's what troubles you about all of this? The turmoil outside finally boiled over into the scholar. Religious members of Isis and Set were immediately at each other's throats. The bar patrons surged toward the exit, taking the three unwilling stragglers with them. Take my hand. I've got you. Outside, the smallest Setite with the loudest voice, Nimlot, was spreading his religious bigotry with ardent zeal. The free city of Esh is freed no more. Now suffer your fate as all those who dare defy Set. Theo, a soldier in the Church of Isis, had enough of Set's tyranny. Set's hold is over. The only reason anyone paints the serpent any mind at all it's because the Emperor shoved that religion down our throats like a poison! Piss off, Knotted. Bad night to be a Setite, Mento. As if you'll see the day. Mentu and Theo charged, fists flying. A larger company of Set soldiers approached, hell-bent on joining the conflict. Victims littered the streets behind them. Kneel to the one true god! Across the thoroughfare, Mentu and Theo continued their bloody fisticuffs. You're done, Isis scum. Mentu yanked the blood-red Isis symbol from Theo's throat. An act of sacrilege. An explosion of sunfire wrath engulfed Mentu's hand, melting flesh from bone. Isis reviles the serpent's touch. Theo's victory was fleeting. A javelin pierced squarely into his chest with a sickening thud. Servitors of Set converged. The street riot now escalated into a full-fledged battle. Kill the infidels! The free city of Esh erupted into total chaos. The violence rippled across the city's boroughs. Zen, help! An inebriated combo became easy prey. Shit. Nimlot squirmed through the throng, sacrificial dagger in hand. Join Set or die! That's not your slogan, is it? Join Set or die? Because if it is, you could do better. This isn't a joke, elf. Oh, gods, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... All at once, Combo erupted. Nearby? F.D. was preoccupied with a particularly fetching bar matron, oblivious to the goings-on. Thank you, dearie. I'll remember your tender embrace always. Nimlot, covered in Kobo's stew, furiously waved his serpent dagger. You're so dead, sorty. What do we have here? F.D. shifted his attention squarely to the diminutive priest. A little treasure snake. He tossed Nimlot soundly and with lots of sounds, into a brick wall. This party keeps getting more and more severed, Jason, and Little Red. For you, maybe. FD took notice of Combo's inebriated state. Oh, well, not for him. Concerned, he searched through his goodies and handed a microvial to Zane. This'll make him right, and then some. Hurry and get! Zane uncorked the vial and force-fed its contents to Combo, who suddenly sprung to his feet. Outstanding! <laughs> Drunk no more. The conflict far from over, FD confronted Setite soldiers by the bushel. I don't like me drinking time interrupted. I definitely don't like me f***ing time interrupted. Zane, behind you! A Setite surged, sword first, toward Zane's back. Zane turn. Too late. Too late for the Setite, that is. His head sheared away, rolling past Zane's feet. His savior stepped forward. You. Belnar. 
The mysterious Muromaki bowed deeply. Your mother sent us. A sheep is waiting. Let's go. Now. The Church of Set called upon more insidious powers than just soldiers and religious fanatics. A servitor of Set blocked their escape route. Its divine kopesh poised. Shit. Belnar pushed Zane clear, katana at the ready, and inched closer to his adversary. Before the two combatants could so much as flinch, F.D. leapt, touching the servitor by the neck. Oh, what is this? A fly? Let's see if you can fly, fly. F.D. spun, sending the servitor sailing through a second-story whorehouse window, where F.D.'s twin stood in all his glory, clearly displeased by the interruption. Nope, definitely not a fly. Brother, what's all this? Bored with your so soon? I see you're certainly not. FD's twin tossed the floundering servitor back down into the street below. Be off, Master Elf. I get it from here. You know, I believe you do. If the gods be good, we'll see each other again. After his new friends departed, FD dealt with the matter of the servitor at hand. Well, if you're not a fly, maybe you're a worm. Let's see how far you can dig, worm! FD nonchalantly stomped on the servitor's head, crushing it into gooey oblivion. The harbor docks soon after. Belnar quickly led the three friends to the harbor and an awaiting ship. The Shoryu Maru is your only safe passage now. The Shoryu Maru, a vessel of Muromaki design, was frenetic with samurai and sailors. Matsunori Chosokabi, the ship's captain and samurai lord, stood on the bow, barking orders. Do not fear, Zane son. We're commissioned by Adaya, your mother. I have a letter in own hand as proof. Oda, a samurai, swung down to Zane, bowed, and offered the letter to him. Zane recognized his mother's handwriting immediately. And so you were. Explosions in the distance echoed across the harbor like an approaching storm. Get on board. And to think I was worried celebrating would lead to trouble. You, such a worry word. Zane gave Desiree a good-natured sock in the arm. <clears throat> if only he didn't have the cursed staff or necklace, he would have kissed her instead. Tonight, my friends, was sheer insanity and inspiration. I say we write a play full of bombast action and intrigue in remembrance. Yes, call it Combo in the Park. Genius. Silver lining. Combo silver. The serpentine dark shadow magically materialized behind Combo. Nimlot revealed himself, holding the serpent dagger covered in Combo's blood. Uh, Combo! See? You are so dead. Before Zane or Desiree could retaliate, Nimlot shoved their wounded friend into them and fled. You Zane gave chase. Elves are well known to be both dexterous and fleet of foot, Ethox even more so. Zane had never lost a race in his life and he wasn't going to lose one now. A primal fury overwhelmed him when he caught up to the priest. Hate, rage. Revenge. The priest of Set would suffer, first with pain, lots of pain, then with his life. Not even his cult god could save him now. <laughs> Nimlot's single dedication to the Serpent Sect delivered him away from the justice he deserved. His pint-sized body transformed into a larger-than-life asp slithering away into the harbor waters. What kind of sorcery? There was no time to ponder the who's and why's of divine spellcraft. Two more servitors of Set stomped toward them, flanked by a mob of Setites. Sound and vipers, get to the ship, hurry. Belnar half dragged, half carried Zane back to the ship. Take up the rope. But my friends, first help you, then help Dolorachi. Desiree crouched over her dying friend, so much blood. She felt helpless as Combo's life slowly ebbed away. There was absolutely nothing she could do. It seems this Targonian's play 
has run out of axe. Run out of axe? Who? We still have the right combo in the park. It's going to be epic. He said so yourself. Combo fumbled for something in his inside pocket. He, he pressed an old leather-bound journal into her hand. Keep this is safe. You and Zen can combo. Can. And just like that, the curtain closed with Combo's last breath. The harbor is closed. With nary a moment to mourn, Desiree looked up to find two setites blocking her entrance to the Shoryu Maru. Samurai released a volley of arrows, killing soldiers, pushing others back. Hurry! Get ready to set sail. A servitor of set all but ignored the projectiles, parrying the volley with speed and precision granted by set's divine primal support. Desiree ran for the gangplank and the safety of the samurai on the deck beyond. The closest servitor then took the end of the gangway and with Hercules' strength twisted, violently rocking Desiree back and forth as she held on for dear life. He finally tore the gangway free from the dock, tossing it into the bay. Desiree miraculously leapt for a rope, just managing to hang on. But Desiree wasn't the only person struggling to board the Shoryumaru. Belnar had his own servitor issues. Belnar! With his lifeline severed, the young samurai fell to the docks with a clatter. Tell Josugabe's son to sit still without me. The regrettable orders quickly filtered across the ship's deck to the captain, and the Shoryu Maru pushed away, carried rapidly downstream with the current. Elnar slowly rose to his feet, his every fiber primed for battle. If this servitor of Set wanted a fight, a fight he would deliver. Desiree still hung precariously, flapping about wildly on the side of the ship. Arrows dangerously zipped and zinged around her. Desiree! Zane! I can't hold on much longer! The Shoryu Maru continued to take fire from the land, an unending volley from the night sky. Arrows pierced through canvas and ropes, causing wood to splinter. It was all too much for Desiree. She had to do something. So, she let go of the rope and, yes, chanced upon the edge of a porthole. Chosokabi brought the ship about in choppy waters. Catapults to bear. Fire! Help! I need help! Resin-fueled stones of heat and flame took to the heavens with a crackle, pockmarking the wharf in a successive series of fireballs. Amidst the chaos of flame and arrow, a katana and kopesh danced, steel and obsidian weaving a spell of arcs, lunges, slashes, and parries, a whirlwind of speed and technique, two worlds apart and yet together, samurai versus servitor of a serpent god. In the smoky haze, the two combatants mirrored the conflict playing out all over the free city of Esh, a city in turmoil. In ruin. This is freedom. On the shore, you Maru, Kagi, the sailing master, worried for his crew. Where is Bernard? Mm. Before me is duty. With every war come vignettes of heroism and self sacrifice. Moments when relationships are forged, tested in the fire of conflict. And here was Zane, lowering a rope to Desiree. <laughs> You can! A fireball screeched overhead. Okisara, oh, look! A mart galley, deck brimming with Setite soldiers, cut across their bow on a converging tack. Ready the weapons. Let's go! A few more seconds and Zane would have Desiree pulled to safety. Got it! I promise to protect you, and protect you I shall. Fire! The amped up crew, eager to meet the enemy, launched catapults and fired deck mounted scorpions. The mart galley returned volley. Fireballs crisscrossed the harbor, whistling through the ether like demented demons. Shoryumaru shuddered from repeated impacts. Amidst all the tumult, 
Desiree tenaciously clung for dear life. However, her grip faltered with each passing second. Zane! Desiree! No! Suddenly, she was gone. Somewhere into the turbulent dark waters below. Ma'at galleys continued to buzz around the harbor. Chosokabi studied their movements, understanding their desire to block the harbor exit. Zane, however, could not wholly appreciate their predicament. He could only think of one person. You can't leave Desiree behind. I made a promise. So did I. The crew held their collective breath as the Shoryu Maru cut between two galleys. Hold on! Into the open sea. Yata yata! You're safe! And to freedom. The pangs of elven grief welled inside Zane, a surging tidal wave in his soul. Was Desiree dying, or had she already drowned? What if instead she were captured by the Setites? Gods! Turn this ship around! Two of Chosokabi's chief lieutenants, Sute and Hojo, pulled Zane off their lord. How can I help you to Madachi now? Pray that she's a good swimmer. Zane couldn't give up. He refused. He ran to a longboat, determined to save Desiree. Sute and Hojo grabbed him and smacked some sense into him. They scolded him for his reckless stupidity. Get to my way again. I'll lock you up. Understand? Yes. Zane understood. He now understood all too well. There are no silver linings. What are those idiots doing? We are going to a party. 